Although dolphins normally travel in small groups, they sometimes come together in spectacular numbers. This is a superpod made up of hundreds upon hundreds of dolphins. But it's not spy tuna's only revelation. She soon discovers just how their extraordinary leaps are performed. Rapid beats of the tail provide the power. Tuna cam is filming under the water yep. and turtle cam, meanwhile, is above the water and getting these extraordinary shots. Yeah, so, so we always had a combination of cameras. I mean, and that's the whole point. We had 13 different types of cameras. They all got different sort of views. So it was very rare we only had one camera down. These are amazing pictures here, aren't they? Talk, talk, talk through these here. Well, this, th these, are, these are when we had a cameraman actually. We always had a crew operating above the surface and below the surface and ones operating the devices. We also had, this is classic, um, you know, long lens, incredible photography uh, in super slow motion. Yeah. And so it's a combination of techniques we were using all the time. Well, presumably you want to get um, fabulous footage, but also shots of behaviour that perhaps hasn't been seen before. Did you find that you were discovering things we about We were. I would say uh, in the course of filming, we probably, sh I'd say about 40 to 50 percent of what we saw with the devices has actually never been seen before, let alone filmed. And that's the amazing thing about the spy devices. What kind of things were you um, uh, excited classic was, by? Uh, you know, lots of people go to health farms, health spas. We found that dolphins do the same. And by sending the devices down, we found that there was a certain rocky outcrop uh, on this coral reef in Mozambique where the dolphins almost on a daily basis would, would visit and they have a good old scrub, they have a good old exfoliation session. John, you have already been involved in a programme like this, haven't you? Which yeah. involved the kind of boulder cam when you that were filming for lions. lions. That's yeah. for lions where it all started and we've now, this is our eighth one. And last one was with penguins, which a lot of people will remember. Mm. So this one was a lot more complicated. It was. It was. The, the devices we had to build this time around, they had to obviously go under the water. And uh, some of them were going down to about 25 metres. So they had all manner of pressures to deal with. And uh, some of them, in the process of filming, they did get slightly damaged. But damaged? Uh, were they damaged? Eaten? Stolen? What happened? A whole array. Some of, them, some of them, the glass blew on the front of them. Other ones, for example, squid cam actually got eaten. Got eaten by giant fish. <laughs> got indigestion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can film a lot now using, presumably, um, you know, the technology that we have. Why was it? Why do you get special pictures from these kind of cameras? It's, a, it's about the animals accepting them, really, right. because obviously in the open ocean they can go where they like. So first of all, if you've got cameras that want, you want to get close to them, they've got to look like things which are friendly to them or at least interesting. So to if them. you send uh, an underwater cameraman down amongst dolphins, is it simply the pressures on the cameraman that make it difficult to film, or do the dolphins react to the cameraman in a, or camerawoman in a certain way? React very differently. Mm. Um, if there's a person there, I mean, obviously, we did have crews which went down and th these devices had to be operated. So we always had cameramen there, but it was the f close proximity that these devices gave you that a cameraman or a cameraman woman couldn't get. Mm.